Good evening, good evening, good evening. Grace and peace to everyone. I believe this is episode seven of the CCC um, testimony series, Christian content creator testimony series um, on my channel. Tonight I have with me um, one of my great sisters, uh, Drina. Um, so I'm going to allow her to share um, her testimony of how she came to Christ and we will just get it rolling. But again, before we get started, uh, if you are a Christian content creator and you would like to share your testimony on my channel, please uh, email me. It should be in the link below um, or on my channel um, in the about section. Um, email me and we can set up a time for you to share your testimony, share the goodness of God in your life. Um, but before we get started, I want to share the scripture of this series. Romans chapter 8, verse 1, uh, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans 8, 1. Again, I'm going to re read that one more time. Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So if you're in Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, who is God in the flesh, um, if you're in him, you you're not condemned. You're you're not judged by God because you're in Jesus Christ and he took your punishment uh, for your sin. So again, I'm just going to leave it at that. It's all about Jesus tonight and his um, wonderful work that he did in my sister's life. So I'm going to allow her to introduce herself, introduce her channel and uh, anything else that he has going on with her. All right. Well, thank you, Daryl. And hello, everyone. And thanks again, Daryl, for allowing me to, to for inviting me to come on here and share my testimony. Uh, these series are really cool. I've seen a few, a few of yours here. So so about me um, and my channel. Let's see. So again, I'm Jarena and uh, I've actually started my channel probably about I think since April is when I started. So I'm pretty new on here. Wow. And basically I have a little summary on the, on the uh, starter page there that basically says um, that I'm here to make application of scripture for the glory of Christ, sharing the gospel to the lost sheep of Christ and encouraging fellow believers. That's basically what I'm here to do. Mm -hmm. Nothing, nothing short of that at all. Um, and then as far as, um, uh, and then basically, I, I I really don't have a like some people have set days they specifically post or they specifically uh, talk about certain things. I'm I'm a little more um, I kind of plan it week by week, so to speak. So every once in a while, I'll I'll post some things, but it's it's Christ centered. And anything that I post is going to be Christ centered. And if I'm talking about maybe um, current events or something like that. Once again, I'm going to address it according to scripture. OK, and then I may just go on there and just talk. A bit. Sometimes when I'm praying, talking to the Lord, there's just topics that come up that I'm talking to him about. And then I think, you know what, I'm going to share that on uh, YouTube. So that's basically how that how I do that. So um, as far as anything that I have coming up, um, mm, not specific, not have any specific plans, though, yet coming up so far. So at any rate, want to talk about my. Um, testimony. So I wasn't one of those that were, that was uh, raised in church or anything like that. I came to know about the Lord when I was 18 years old and um, the, uh, how I came to know some, someone had told me about this church and it was an apostolic Pentecostal church that I was introduced to. And so I did the whole thing with the, Oh, you know what? Oh yeah. What, what was your life life like before Christ? Oh, you know what? Sorry. <laughs> I'm, go I'm getting ahead of myself. It's all good. Just keep going. <laughs> right. So let's let's back up. So my life before Christ, basically, I just basically lived according to my own, you know, uh, will and thoughts. I basically lived uh, just according to my own impulses, to be honest with you. Now, I was one of those type of people that was kind of safe about life. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't do too much. But basically, I would just, you know. <laughs> Do what I think is best, to be honest with you. So that was my life before Christ. Um, I didn't have a, I really didn't have a guide, to be honest with you. I just went according to what I felt is right. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so did you have a re religious background? Maybe you, your family or anything? So basically my mother, she used to teach us about, because my mother was raised Catholic when she was a little kid. 
And so she would teach us kind of Catholic stuff. Like, you know, when you pray, you do the cross thing and, you know, that type of thing. Um, and the, you know, the, that little Mary chain or the little chain, the rose, all that business. <laughs> she would talk chain. to us about that. And then, but the rest of my family, they were more Baptist. And so uh, we would visit a church here and here and there, but I was never, I just, I wasn't raised in church and I wasn't really taught like the fundamentals, you know, about salvation and things like that. Yeah. Okay. So we didn't go, I didn't go to church on a regular basis when I was a kid or anything like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what would you say um, now, was it your teenage years or your early twenties, thirties, whatever, um, where, where God started like calling you to himself? Like what was your religious background? Like mm -hmm. um, what was your life like? Right. So I will say this, when I was a kid, I really had a problem with the fact that we die. Okay. okay. I had a cousin that died when he was uh, 14. Um, he had, we, we used to live in some projects in Chicago and, and my cousins lived in the, in the buildings where they had the like, when it goes up to like the 16th floor. High rise. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he ended up dying on one of the elevators because it was uh, broke and he got on it anyway. So I remember I was nine years old and I thought, man, it's just not right that people die. You know, I really thought that. And I always had this kind of um, almost kind of a obsession, so to speak, with with what happens to us after we die. And I thought, you know, it's just somehow somebody you can never see them again. So what actually happens to them? And so that actually followed me throughout my life. I would, would just think about that. So just make a long story short. When I ended up being introduced to about the Lord when I was 18 years old, and like I said, it was a Pentecostal church, I was thinking, man, now I'll definitely go to heaven because I was I was kind of concerned <laughs> about, you know, where, where do we go after we die? So um, when I found out about, you know, that church and it was like one of those holiness churches where you kind of have all these kind of rules and regulations. Like I used to be one of those people that wore dresses all the time. Yeah, I was one of them. Okay. All right. Doing the most. Right. Yeah, that was me. So, uh, so yeah. So when I got into that now, and by the way, I did think that I was saved then when I went to that church and, you know, I tarried for the Holy ghost and all that. And, um, and so I thought I was saved then. So that is really where I, I would say that my, um, me coming to know the Lord, but I, I don't, I don't think I got saved then. Like, I, I don't think that I actually, you know what I mean? That the Lord saved me at that point, but I thought I was. Okay. So then, oh, how, how did you, how did you get connected to that, that church at 18? How did you, right. you know, how do so, you get connected to that church specifically? Exactly. Okay. So, um, that, you know, you have to skip over a lot of stuff <laughs> when you're trying to tell a story, but anyway, so I had gotten married when I was 17 years old. And so, of course, and then in my husband at the time, he was only 18. So we was poor. All right. So <laughs> there was someone that we ended up getting in contact with. She was like a social worker. And so make a long story short, she was getting us connected to resources. And she happened to be the one that go went to that church. So she invited us to that church. And um, and and. So then, you know, she introduced us to her, to the pastor there and all that type of stuff. So that's basically how I ended up finding out about that. And actually that pastor is the one who married, married us and did all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So that's how that happened. So, so then I was going there for a while, went through some things where I ended up getting divorced and all of that. And so I began to question even some things that, that, I, that was being taught there in that church. Yeah. And I just wanted to, I felt like, well, here's the thing. And I think I said this in one of my videos. I felt like it was just really, um, uh, what do I want to say? Very religious and rules and stuff like that. Yep. And so I stopped going there for a while. I just stopped okay. going. Okay. And I went on this kind of mission to examine religion. And, um, and I, another thing I had, a, let me just say this too. I had a problem with the fact that it was taught that Jesus that um, basically God is like a, um, almost like a modalism. Like sometimes he's Jesus, sometimes mm -hmm. he's God, the father. Yeah. And I, and, but in, let me back up a little bit. The pastor there though, he was a stickler about reading the Bible and he was a stickler yeah. about being obedient. Okay. So yeah. I really learned 
obedient about the the idea of obedience just do do what the lord tells you to do whatever and it's, it was almost like you know do what god says do what the pastor tells you to do all that type of stuff and you know that's how the lord will you know protect you and you know all that type of thing so i really did read my bible myself and i would actually yes. read my bible from genesis through revelations i wouldn't get me a little schedule because i really want to know the lord so that was part of why i started questioning stuff that i was taught actually yeah so i would read stuff like um you know how in revelations where it says that remember when they were going to open the book and they said that nobody was worthy to open the book and then the lamb who was slain walked up and oh. took the book out oh. of the hand of the one that oh. was sitting on the throne so that was god the father and i'm just like well how is how is this modalism well, sure. right there we, we see the trinity so I started having issues just with the doctrine. I also had issues with this idea that everybody has to speak in tongues and that's what makes you go to heaven. I, mm. I, I didn't, that didn't make sense to me either okay. um, because when I read in Acts how, remember the day of Pentecost and remember how they actually knew what one another was saying. So when I was in these settings where people are just like, you know, speaking gibberish gibberish yep. it didn't make sense to me what i was mm -hmm. it didn't make sense to me and i was in one of those deals where the pastor if you question you know stuff you would be considered a heretic so i didn't i didn't even talk to him about it i didn't say anything to him about it but i would i would talk to other people i knew about that so okay so let me just kind of <laughs> fast forward a little bit so i did take a pause and didn't go to church for quite for quite some time and I began to study religion and study like different religions and things like that because I start questioning what I was being taught. One thing I pointed out to me is that uh, I noted religions that that did not um, acknowledge Christ and like, you know, faith alone, stuff like mm -hmm. that. And I saw how each one of those religions, those people always had some type of vision. It was always an isolated vision. So then I found out, I did some history on Azusa Street. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I some, yeah, I did some study on that. And I was like, see, this is another thing where it was an isolated, you know, situation that people like they're sharing their isolated experiences and saying that, you know, making that a doctrine, you know, and without actually holding to scripture. So... I tried to find another church, but now let me just, let me say this too. In the meantime, I really wasn't living a surrendered life to Christ. Do you see what I mean? Yep. So while I'm repping Jesus, mm -hmm. I'm doing all that. I'm really not living a surrendered life to him, you know? Um, so I real, found it. Real quick, I have a question real quick. So oh, sorry. Um, you, uh, you was in the word, uh -huh. you, was, you was praying possibly, yeah. Yeah. um, you weren't seeking any of the false gods out there, like, you know, Hindus and Muslims. So you was, you was in the word. You wasn't like seeking anything else outside of the Bible. Right. Okay. But I just would like examine all these other, okay. other religions just okay. because I wanted to see like their origins. And because, and then it, part of what's, what um, sparked that was that I was taking a sociology class too. Uh, when I was in school and I just started examining stuff, just, just, you know, culture and all that. So, and once again, this is the Lord, you know, this, this Absolutely. is the Lord being gracious to me. Amen. Um, so I end up going to another church that was non-dominant, non-denominational. And it, like, it was one of those, um, what you, what do you call that? Where they, they welcome all different types of faiths. Uh, the seeker sensitive. Uh, yeah. And it's, it's, um, um, Communicable? Is it communicable? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ecumenical. Yeah. yeah, that that. So it was, it was that type of setting. Sure. But they still there was still people there that rep the whole speaking in tongues and you know all that business. But I met someone that was he used to be a pastor. He's a pastor now, but I met someone that was a pastor there, and I asked him. I said, because he because we we were doing this course there, and there were several people in the class that believed in the Trinity. So I asked him. Mm -hmm. I said, so tell me, tell me about the fact that you believe in a Trinity because where I'm from, I was told that people that believe in a Trinity believe in three gods, sure, right? Sure. So I asked him, I said, so tell me, do you actually believe that there's three gods? Because then that would be, I mean, <laughs> in the Old Testament, we already know you yep. canceled on that. <laughs> Come talking on. about there's more than one God, you know, That's all right. throughout Bible, you That's know, right. really. That's but, right. you know, the Lord was serious about that. So I asked him and he said, no, we don't believe in three gods. And he was 
he was talking to me about the Trinity. And I said, you know, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking that is God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy spirit. And they're all one. I mean, it's one God, but it's three distinct persons. That, that's what I thought. Right. And it was just, it was crazy how I was, I was so glad I had talked to this dude because yeah. I was just so, you know, I was still had all these questions about that. So I was there, but even being there, there were still problems there as well, because yeah. um, the pastor that was the actual pastor that was at that church, he would do stuff like this. Like, for example, they, they believe in all the signs and wonders. Now, now let me just say this. God is great. Okay. Yeah. He's all powerful. He can do whatever he wants to do. That's right. um, and I'm not saying that he can't do anything today or any of that business. What I am saying though, is that there's things that goes on with this signs and wonders business and churches. And it's not true that it's there is a game. They're playing a game. So that is the type of stuff that I would see there. And I had a problem with it. So one day the, that pastor there, she, he told me, he was like, um, uh, the Lord is telling me to to tell you to, uh, he he wants you to um, tell tell the people something like you know tell the people go to people and tell them what the Lord is telling me to tell them. Listen, <laughs> let me tell you something. The Lord ain't telling me to tell nobody nothing. Okay, <laughs> so I'm not about to play this game with you. I, and, and, well, yeah, and what I was my thing is I've always been the type of person where you know we we all have we're all sinners so you know yeah. you, we, we've lied at some point we've done something right yep. but I really don't like to play with God you know what I mean yeah. like that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. like to play, play like he's saying something and all that business I don't want to do yeah. that so I had a problem with that so once again I end up not being at nobody's church okay now it was a few years of that but here's the thing I could not shake the fact that I know I need to serve the Lord that was the thing. I couldn't get that. I couldn't like um, get that out of my mind that mm -hmm. I need to be living for the Lord. So I would still read my scriptures. Like I said, I would still do that. And so one day I was at work and I was on break reading my reading the Bible. And there was this guy that came to me and he said, uh, and mind you, this guy was a seven day Adventist. OK. And okay. Yeah, he was a seven day Adventist. And you know what he said to me? He's like, oh, I see you reading your scriptures. And he was he was one of them seven day Adventists. And I'm just trying to be honest. Okay, so hopefully no seven day Adventist people get upset. Any rate, <laughs> he was one of those seven day Adventist people that was kind of, you know, like religious acting though, you know what I mean? And kind of weird a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but he told me, he said, uh, have you ever heard of John MacArthur? And I was like, wow. uh, no, I've never heard of him before. Wow. He sent me a message of John, John MacArthur. The title was True Worship. And he came out of the um, passage with the woman at the well. And remember when Jesus was saying that there's, there's going to be a time where you, you're not going to worship here or and they, they that worship me, worship me in spirit and in truth. In truth. Come on. Man, that message, I went home and, and listened to that message. And I'm telling you, that is when, that's when I'm just telling you, that is when I believe the Lord saved me. Amen. Because when I listened to that message, Amen. I felt like, man, I was not really worshiping God, like really yeah. serving God this whole time. I just wasn't, it, you know, from that point, from the part that I told you about, I was talking to the Lord and I told him, you know what, Lord, I really need you to have mercy on me. I say, you know, I, I thank you for not killing me by now, sure. you know, sure. for allowing yeah. me to still live to this point. And I just asked the Lord to have mercy on me and help me to live for him. And, and here's another thing too. Even when I was in the holiness church, my problem was this too. We do all this like external stuff, but I know who I am. You understand what I'm saying? I know how I feel about stuff. I know what I think. I know how I feel. And if God sees everything, then guess what? I'm still trash. I'm still not, you see what I mean? What I need to be. So I felt like, uh, so anyway, so when, when, when I listened to that, I was like, man, I really need to surrender to God. So here's the thing. Now, from that time forward, you know, I was really, really, I feel like, like I said, I feel like that's when the Lord saved me. And I was, you know, tr really trying to seek his face and live for him. So I was on a mission to find a church home. Now, in the in the process of that, um, you know, I went through, I went to a couple of churches and, and it is what it is. There's one other church I went to that um, I basically thought, because at that point I thought, John MacArthur, and then I start uh, um, following up on the people he would reference, like um, R.C. Sproul and um, 
uh, I'll end up finding out about um, Paul Washer and yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Come on. So, so I end up kind of zoning in on the um, um, oh my goodness, what, why am I not thinking of it? The um, Reformed, Reformed yeah, theology. theology. Yes, yes. So that's absolutely. that's what. Yeah. So I thought, you know what? If I could find a church that was somehow connected with Reformed theology, like with some, like you know. So I found one place that the pastor had had graduated from the um, uh, college that John MacArthur has. Yeah. So I went there and it just, it, here's the thing. This is where and we're, everything, every, everybody is, is in Christ. You know, everybody's in Christ is, is in Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. But in this setting, I was the only, the absolute only Brown person there. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> listen, listen, every, uh, what, Listen, it's neither Jew or Greek, bond or free. All, I got you. I'm just saying. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. It, it just, it is what it is. I mean, like. I've, I've, I've been there myself. So go ahead. Keep going. Yeah, Keep going. And, and not see that. And not only was I the only brown person, but, you know, everybody had the ideal setup. You know, everybody was married. They had the, the kids. And, you know, I, I was the only brown person. I had, my kids were, well, I think my, yeah, my kids were was even adults then. And. I don't know. I just, I, for some reason, I couldn't get connected there. And they were really, I mean, they did teach the truth, though. They really did. I mean, right. they, they really did. And But anyway, so <laughs> I was on a mission again <laughs> to find a church home. And the Lord was merciful to me. I ended up finding one. And uh, I just, I had actually heard about this place. I was doing an outreach um, event through my, through a job that I had before. And uh, the church that donated some stuff for this, for this event, they, I found out about the church. And so at any rate, I ended up, start, and I listened to him teach and the church is Trader's Point. Uh, the pastor is um, Aaron Brockett. And when I first heard him teach, I was like, wow, he is, he, he really sticks to the word. Cause that's where I wanted to go. I told the Lord, I said, if you would let me know, I, this is what I told him. I said, if you would let me know where you are, I will, I tell you, I'll serve you. I'll mm -hmm. serve the community. I'll serve others through that medium. I said, I would do that. I, I don't know where you are. That's what I mean. Meaning I don't know where you are as far as in the visible church. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the Lord did that for me. But then let me just say this. You know how we do, you know, being a believers, there's still the matter of dealing with sin, you know, dealing with, you know, your flesh and get, you Come know, on. the process of sanctification. So I used to tell the Lord this. I would tell him, I said, you know, when I, when I would read scripture, you know how scripture says, the Lord said, um, be ye holy for I am holy. That's right. I would tell the Lord, who's holy? Who are you talking about? I've never seen a holy person before. I don't know what you're talking about, Lord. <laughs> That's what I would tell him. <laughs> and then there, there are scriptures where he says to be righteous for, you know, for I am, you know, to oh, oh, none but the righteous, you know, was, was see the Lord. Yep. And I'm like, Lord, I'm not righteous. So I don't. And then th this is what the Lord showed me. Just to make a long story short. I felt like I remember telling the Lord one time, I said, you know what, Lord, had you not allowed sin to come here, I wouldn't have a problem with my flesh. Mm. <laughs> that's what I told him. I've told him that in prayer before. I know that's, that's crazy, but no, I told him that. Keep going, I said, keep going. But, but this, this is what the Lord did for me. I had an issue because with me, I'm one of those, like I said, I'm one of those people that, and I'm, I'm regular like everybody else, but I'm, I like to, to deal with reality and deal with what's actually happening. Sure. So I would tell the Lord, you know, I feel this way. I think this way. I'm this way. I'm that way. And I just, I, when I read the word, like reading the Sermon on the Mount, I just, I don't know how you expect me to live right. <laughs> that, that's what I would tell the Lord. Wow. And do you know, along the walk, just the walk with Christ, this is what he showed me. Now I had already read Galatians. That's why Galatians 2.20 is one of my favorite scriptures. I had read that several times, but one day after reading that, and I was talking to the Lord in prayer and what came to my mind is this. You can't live right. Come on, you gotta preach. Right. Come on, come on. You cannot live right. Absolutely. So no matter what you do, because see, remember, I came from that setting of crossing the dot, you know, dotting the eyes, cross teeth. Don't, sure. I don't go here. I don't do this. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't mess with nobody. It's not my my husband. I don't this. I don't that. But see, this is more than a checkoff list. Come so on that's now. not what this is about. This is about living a surrendered life to Christ, bowing right. the knee to God. So, but then he lives what I cannot live. He Come lives on. in me what I cannot live. And when I realized that, I was just like, man. So this is not about me trying to do anything. This is about just like how when, when we live in the world before we come to Christ, 
We was like I just told you, I lived on my impulses. So basically, I bow basically to myself. I right. bow to the newest, th the latest thing. I bow to whatever is, is happening. What it is, is when you come to Christ, you bow to him. Come so then on. you go against your own self. But at the same time, the Lord is the one who lives in me. He's the one who develops the fruit. So as I'm continuing with him, he began to show me that, you know, John chapter 15, where it talks about the believer in Christ, you know, yeah. the, uh, that he's the vine and we're the branches. Yeah. He develops the fruit and I get to prance around here displaying this fruit that he actually made in me. But what he requires of me, though, is to bow, to surrender my whole entire life to him. And that is, he just, he made that so real to me. Come on, come on. And I, mind, as I'm just going along this walk with him, he just, and, it, and so from that point on, what kept ringing in my head was total surrender to Christ for the Lordship of Christ. That is what this is about. This is about total surrender. And so, so anyway, so so as far as what I'm doing right now, well, guess what? I'm still on this journey Come of on. total surrender good. to the Lordship of Christ. That's, That's what this is about. That's so to any rate. That's right? good. No, sister, you, um, you were going in. I was, I was getting happy over but, here. That's what's up. But yeah, so that's basically what happened. I <laughs> see that. Hope I made that that clear. So the Lord has been just he's his grace. And that's, you know, he's and that's why I'm just so worked up about the Lord, because here's the thing. I know who I am. OK, so as I'm walking with the Lord, I see how he actually changes me. There's there's um, there's reasoning that I don't even have anymore. You know, there's just ways that the ways that I even handle things. I don't even have them like that anymore. I remember one time I had a. Um, I was working with a coworker. Well, she wasn't really a coworker. At any rate, there's there's a position that I had where I was working in someone's facility. Mm -hmm. So I was using their space to do the job that I was doing. And for some reason, this individual, she just didn't like me. I don't know why. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't think I did anything to her. But at any rate, she wanted to she wanted to be my boss, but she wasn't my boss. I, I had my own director. I was just doing a service in her facility. So she kept trying to like direct me, you know what I mean? <laughs> like tell me what to do. And, and then one time she, she talked to me real disrespectful. And so I was beginning to despise her, to be honest with you. And I remember one day she was walking up the hall and I thought in my mind, Lord, I'm gonna need you to help me to love her. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing, how I feel about her is gonna come out. It's gonna happen. Right. So I need that. That's why I asked the Lord. I said, help me to right. just love her as a human being. And see, that's the thing that, and, and the Lord helped me to do that. You know, he did in spite of how she was treating me. So, you know, I, anyway, so I just, this whole salvation and being redeemed and all that, I tell people all the time, this is because a lot of times the reason why people kind of like real lackadaisy about Christianity, mm -hmm. they think this is a club. They think this is just something that you do. You know, everybody has their thing that they do. Well, yeah. I, I, I'm a part of a sorority or I'm, I'm a, I don't know, I'm a part of this club. And, you know, you want to feel belonging. You want to make friends. Being an actual Christian is new life. You have mm -hmm. actually been born again, truly. Yeah. yeah. And that's why John chapter one, that the passages I mentioned to you about being born of God, not of the flesh, not of the will of man, all that business. This is truly a work of God. Amen. And that's why you sometimes you see people where, you know, they they supposedly was walking with Christ at one point and then and then now all of a sudden they change their mind they're doing something else. Because what it was was when you was supposedly with Christ, this worked for you. You see what I mean? This this right. kind of fitted your lifestyle or what have you. But see, this has to be more than that. This can't just be something that you do that this is just like a your your thing. You know yeah. what I mean? You have to truly be born again. Amen. And that's why I know the Lord is real. This is not a game, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, this is not just a religion. That's not what this is. But yeah, so I think I might have kind of got off course there. So anyway, no, it's, it's, it's all good. Thing. Get off course, do your thing. Um, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. one of the the next things I was going to ask you mm -hmm. is what are some of your favorite scriptures? Uh, mm -hmm. You mentioned uh, John 1, uh, 12, um, but, all to, but to all who did receive him, mm -hmm. who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So yeah, you 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 definitely explain that absolutely well. So I I I, I applaud you for that. 
Um, and then you, I think you mentioned Galatians. Oh yeah. Yeah. Two twenty. Yes. I, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself up for me. Yes. Gave Himself for me. So, yes. sister, sister, I, I, let me stop sharing my screen. Let me That's take right. this off the screen real quick. Uh -huh. Sister, sh can you share the gospel, please? See. <laughs> Okay, well, the gospel, here's the gospel. Here's the thing. The God of the entire universe, he is holy and he's righteous. Now, it talks about the supremacy of Christ in Colossians chapter one. Everything was made for him and by him, all right? We were made for his glory. Now, this is what happened. Now, we see in Genesis chapter three, the fall, right? This is, th this, this, this is what messed up everything, okay? So now we are... We are in a fallen, fallen state. And so what the Lord has done is he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to pay the price for the sin that we, for the debt that we owe. All Come right. On. And then in doing so, now, not only does he pay our debt in doing so, but he also defeated sin and death on our behalf. So now, you know, when we come to Christ, we're, we're no longer bound to sin, nor are we any longer dead in trespasses and sin. He makes us alive in him in through Christ. So basically the gospel is this, turn from your wicked ways, turn to Christ, repent, acknowledge the fact that you are a sinner. We're all sinners. Acknowledge that, acknowledge that we, a holy God created us and he created us for himself. And yeah. the only way we can get to him is through Christ. Come on. So we must believe in the one that he has sent. Remember, Jesus said that. He said that he said that if you don't if you don't believe in the one that that he has sent, you will die in your sins. Yeah. So in that in essence, we need to surrender to the Lord, come to him in repentance, ask him to have mercy on us and make us new in him. Amen. That's basically the gospel. Amen. Yep. Amen. That's good. That's good. Yep. I I, I appreciate that. I applaud that. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Christ. Oh, there's there's uh April Chapman. Yeah, April. Uh -huh. April's, hey. in, the, April's uh -huh. in the building. See that. Dr. Yeah. Joe's in the building. Rob's in the building. Oh man, sister, you uh woo! Yes. Sir. I, I yes, get worked sir. up about the Lord. I really do. You know, know, you know John really Piper? You know, you know Piper, right? Absolutely, yes. Man, he be getting worked up about the Lord. I'd be like, yes, the, absolutely. <laughs> I just, I really do. I love the Lord. He's just, he's a, he's a sweet savior. And it's just a miracle that, that we know him because, you know, we were, we were dead in trespassing the sins. There's no way. And that's the part that gets me worked up because, you know, I, in my profession, I've had to handle people that are dead. I've had to uh, verify whether a person is actually dead or not. And let me tell you something. Nobody's ever said to me, now make sure you listen to my heart rate real well to make sure that I'm dead. I don't want them putting me in a body bag and I'm still alive. Nobody's ever said anything to me once they were dead. And that's the thing. We're dead in trespasses and sins. So yeah. there's no way that we could even come to Christ ourselves. That is his grace that mm -hmm. opens up our eyes to even say, Lord, have mercy on me. Save me. You know, it's just it blows my mind what Christ has done for us. That's why I don't I don't have no time for the foolishness. It, and when I hear people say that people can come to Christ and leave Christ, man, stop it. You know what? Salvation is of the Lord. It's the work of God. So we deny the power of God by even feeding into that foolishness. Yeah. There is no way that you can leave Christ once Christ has you, once he belongs to you. You know, mm -hmm. I just but anyway. Yeah, I'm getting worked up again. No, that's so, good. That's go good. Keep, keep, it, keep it coming. We're going to get, off, gonna get off course. So, no, that's, yeah. That's anyway, good. Yeah. That, is, that, is, that is so, so yeah. good. Sister April said, yeah, nope, never heard a dead person say that. Never. Amen. Never. That's why it's such a miraculous work. It's just really a miracle. It's that's a miracle. Right. And, and that's, and, you know, acknowledging the fact that salvation's of the Lord, that's what provokes us. To that I mean, that should provoke us to cling more to the cross. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because you understand that this is all Christ. This is not me. You see? So, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's so good news. Um, because, yeah, we're, we're dead in our trespasses and sins. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 
we deserve God's wrath. We, the, we deserve God's justice in hell, in the lake of fire forever. Right. But God, but you know, God. being rich in his mercy yes. because of his great love with which he loved us, Amen. even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins, Amen. he made us alive. He made us alive together with Christ. That's By it. grace, we have been saved. So, yeah. But well, that's the, I think Titus, what's that other, that kind of alludes to the other scripture that I had. Uh, yes. What was that? Yes. Titus, yes. Two and, Titus two and three. three. Yeah, let me, let me Titus. share that. Yeah. Let me share that real quick. Let me share that. Yep. I always have Here problems remember the actual, yeah, that, that is it right there. That's one of, that's it right there. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God, our savior appeared, he saved us. Not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and re renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Amen. Amen. Love it. Love it. That's 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 what's up right there. That's it. That's it. Yep. I love it. So. Mm. That's yep, something. yep. So, what are the questions? Huh? So, so good news. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, so anybody that's watching or anybody that will watch that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ through his, uh, through his blood and death and resurrection, um, and his perfect, perfect life on behalf of his people, mm -hmm. we, we, we beg you, we urge you to repent and yes. believe and trust in him. Um, mm -hmm. because the goodness and loving kindness of our God and Savior appeared he saved us not by anything we can do but by his own mercy by his own holding back what we deserve yes by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the holy spirit he poured out richly on us through jesus christ we're justified we're made right we're we're no longer condemned by his yes. grace we may become heirs according to the hope of eternal life that hope yes. of eternal life is ours in christ jesus so whoever's watching this that does not know jesus thank you jesus you can know him um repent of your sins and believe in him today um yes yeah sister Amen. thank you thank you Bless thank you Lord. thank you thank you thank you so much for for sharing um uh your favorite scriptures um there's one more that you had on here mm -hmm. first john chapter three verse two and i'll share my screen oh, here yeah yeah Oh, I see April coming. See there. Amen. Yeah. So if you if you wanted to just tell tell the people why that so, speaks to you. So this is what I am anticipating right here. I cannot wait till this day comes. Worship God. Worship God. So this this right here. Behold, we are God's children now. And what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. I cannot wait till that day comes. Amen. That's going to be the day where there is absolutely no more sin. You know that? Aren't you Aren't you looking forward to the day where you don't got to deal with none of that? You don't got to deal with none of that. Oh, man, I should have never felt that way. Well, that, that's, I shouldn't have said that. I'm going to have to deal with any of that. Amen. I'll actually see him as he is. And I'll be made, I'll, I'll, I will be made like him and see him as he is. I, I can't wait till that day come. I, I, that's what I'm looking forward to. So that's why that's what that's one of the scriptures that I actually have is it's one of our mission statements. I, I lead a small group, a women's small group. Cool. And that, that scripture, part of that is our mission statement that we're preparing. This, this is what we're doing here. We're preparing for that day. You know, so that's what's up. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, be, please be sure. Please, 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 please be sure uh, to like, subscribe, comment on my channel. But also, I'll share my screen here again mm -hmm. uh, for my sister's channel here. Um, please be sure to go to her channel. Like, subscribe, comment. She has some great content on here. Um, shout out to my sister April in the chat. Um, yeah, hey, we did, April. We did the, the Romans 1 challenge. Mm -hmm. um, Drina has an amazing uh, review of Romans chapter 1. Um, and she just has great, great, um, short videos on here, long form videos on here, just preaching about the good news of Jesus Christ. Um, so again, like 
share, comment, hit that bell notification. Um, but subscribe to her. Make sure there it is, 240. Come on, get it on up. Keep it going, is. keep going, keep <laughs> going. Uh, but Aww. make sure to like, subscribe, comment, all of oh, that. Jo Joseph's in there too. I just saw Joseph. Hey, yes. Joseph. Hey, yes. April. Yes, yes, Aww. yes. Dr. Joe is in the yeah, house. Joseph, he be going off. He be, he, Joe be going off on boy. <laughs> yeah. He, he, you know, yeah. I, I, I praise God. I, I connected with him. Um, um, I'm going to have him on in a few weeks. So I'm, I'm ex so excited to speak with my brother. Um, but yeah, he's, he's uh, amazing. So I'm April. grateful for yeah. the, the great God who saved us from his righteous wrath. Uh, we Amen. all just des we all deserve his wrath, but he saved us according to his mercy and grace. He loved us. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm grateful. But again, yes. please go to my sister's channel. You can search her right on YouTube uh, under her name. Um, mm -hmm. And this is her channel as well. I know this is a lot to type in. Um, but again, okay. you could type that in if you want to. Yeah. Or, <laughs> or, you could, yeah, could, or they could just just type Jarena. Yeah. You know? and, and she'll yeah. be, she'll be type probably the yeah. first first on the uh your and results there my, yeah and i i haven't got fancy like you know april and them april and them they got they, they lives together you too as far as all the fans you know like you know what i mean y'all got y'all life together as far as the youtube channel with all the details i have not you know you know gotten that you know together as far as the graphics and all that business but i promise you i make every effort to glorify christ mm -hmm. right that is what this this is what my channel is about it's about giving God the glory, making appropriate application of scripture, encouraging fellow believers, and sharing the gospel to the lost sheep of Christ. That's Amen. basically what my focus is. So Amen. Yeah. yeah. That was that was her mission statement. That was her her to-do list and the duty list. Mm -hmm. And she's she's going for it. She's doing mm -hmm. it in every single video she posts. So again, please make sure you go search her up, like her channel, subscribe hit that bell notification. So anytime she goes live, anytime she posts a short or a video, you are notified. Um, but yeah, where Christ is glorified through the application of scripture. Again, please make sure you go and do that. Um, but yes, yeah. thank you yeah, so much. Is there anything else that you would like to share with us tonight? Anything else that the Lord is working either on you or any word that you have for the church? Um. Just to, in, in, in these day, and of course, the day that we're in right now, this is like no other. It's, it's the same day, so to speak. You know what I mean? We, we, we're dealing with sin. We're dealing the, with the fallenness of this world. And I would just say that we all must continue to hold up the bloodstained banner, okay? We must all, all just stay faithful to who God is and stay true to his word, regardless of what the world is doing. Um, and in, in essence, you know, what I want to say is, is that we want to just stay faithful to Christ, no matter what we're faced with. You know, mm -hmm. we hear the latest about the whole abortion stuff and this, and this and that. And the issue is lordship. Always keep that in mind. Lordship is the issue. We were created. So we have a bent to serve, worship something. OK, yeah. so if we do not worship God, we are going to worship one of these little idols, these little G gods. And it's damnable. All right. So the focus needs to be, if you don't know who the Lord is, you might want to find out who he is. And there's several people even in this chat that has uh, content where you can find out who the Lord is. Daryl has contact, you can contact um, content where you can find out who the Lord is. And so the issue is, is that we need to know him. And the only way that we can know him is through his word. You're not going to get to know the Lord by just looking at the sky and looking at how beautiful the trees are and looking at other human beings, although we're really excellent beings, we really are, and the animal kingdom and all that. We get to know who he is by reading the word of God by getting connected to a Bible-believing church, that's how we get to know who he is, all right? We know he exists, obviously, with all this great stuff that's been made, but to get to know who he is, we must read his word and deny everything else. Anything else that goes against the word of God is damnable, is devilment, is evil, it's the enemy, all right? Yes. The enemy is, remember, we were created for God, okay? We were created for him, for his glory, to worship him and nothing else. So mm -hmm. just wanted to say that real quick. And thanks for ha having me on, Daryl. I really appreciate it. 
um, and really the the my YouTube channel is actually like a hobby, to be honest with you. It's a hobby. Uh, and I actually found a hobby that I like doing because I love yes. <laughs> I love the word of God. I love God. So so anyway, yeah. So no, that's, that's what I want to say about that. That's awesome. That is so good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, any again, please make sure you go like and subscribe to um, Sister Drina's channel. Mm -hmm. um, also, if you are a Christian content creator, please make sure you hit me up. Um, my email's in my about me section. Um, please make sure you hit me up so we can uh, collaborate and you can share your testimony of how you come to Christ. Um, thank you so much for everybody that's watching tonight. Yeah. Um, Sister April, I have you in a few weeks. Uh, Brother oh, Joe, man. I have you in a few weeks. So thank you so much, everybody. Um, any last words before we close? Um, let's see. Anything else I want to say? Well, thank you so much for having me on here. I really appreciate it. Because, you know, I'm a new content creator. I just started, what, in April, I think it was. <laughs> so I'm a newbie. So I appreciate you for having me on here. And thank you so much for all your uh, content that you do as well, Daryl. I'm just grateful for all the the other um, content creators that, in mind of fact, want to say too, the reason why I even started channel was I was encouraged by all the other content creators like April, April Chapman, uh, Jason with Dear Wolf Christian and uh, who else? Uh, it was several of them, um, Violet, a lot of them. They really encouraged me to, uh, to, to even do my own channel. So I'm just thankful for all the people that tells the truth about the Lord. Cause you know, I come from a place where I was actually in a setting that was a cult and sure. there was some deception. So I'm, I take it personal when I hear somebody lying about the Lord. So I, and I take it personal when I see somebody telling the truth, I'm like, Oh man, I'm so happy that yeah. they're here. So I'm just very grateful for all the other content, create Christian content, true co Christian content creators. And I'm just really thankful to be here and, and that the Lord would be gracious. You know, this is his grace that he would allow us to be his child. You know, that yeah. this is his grace. And so I am, um, I'm just overwhelmed by the love of God. I really am. He's, he's, there's no one like the Lord. He's so sweet. So thank you so much for allowing me to be on here, but you know, for inviting me on and stuff. It's really nice. It's pretty cool. So, yep. Awesome. And that's, yes. I guess oh. that's the, yeah. That's I think the I answered answer. all the questions too. Good. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. I so did. thank you. Okay, um, I don't know why I'm going in extra slow motion, but hopefully oh. it's not recorded like that. Oh. Um, but yeah, shout out to everybody in the chat. Yeah. Thank you so much, sister, for sharing your mm -hmm. testimony tonight. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to the time with April. Uh, next week, um, I have Bree and Babes uh, with me. Uh, she'll oh, be sharing. Violet. Violet. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to my brother, Rob, who shared his testimony last week. Yeah, he um, did. So I'm, I'm just grateful for what the Lord is doing in our lives. And I, I pray and I hope that it reaches millions. The gospel yes. reaches millions so that they Amen. can be saved. They can hear the good news of Jesus Christ. They can hear the voice of the Lord and the Holy Spirit will do whatever he needs to do in their lives to call them to Jesus Christ, to, to call them to Christ effectually, to yes. save them and to, to, to keep them eternally secure. Um, so I thank you, sister, Amen. so much for sharing your testimony. You led the conversation. Aww. I thank you for that. See. Um, hopefully um, my brother, uh, I see my brother Mark in the chat. Um, oh, there's Mark Ryan. Yep, shouts Aww. out to him. Um, our our, our, our uh, content on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Um, so hopefully I'll have him on to share his testimony. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just so grateful. So any, anybody that's watching, please, if you do not know Jesus Christ, repent of your sins. Believe mm -hmm. in him today. The good news of Christ will save your soul uh, from God's justice, and you will be saved to God as an adopted child of God. So God Amen. bless. Um, so much, sister. Um, Thank you. Please, please hang on. Um, I'm going to hang up for, for everybody else, but please okay. hang on and we'll talk. Thank you so okay. much, everybody. Right. Grace and peace. Yep. Good night. <laughs>